for me, there wasn't a thought process that went into it. It kind of evolved from different things that happened. We kind of met when, uh, when, yeah, when we were perhaps very open to doing something that hadn't been done before. So I started to work towards this idea of having, you know, of having events going on. And, um, and then that evolved kind of into the idea of having some sort of a, a festival, but I didn't really want to do a festival like the regular festivals around that I wouldn't have known of. And around the same time, I, I happened to come across an article in a, I think it was an in-flight magazine with Erlingus, but it was by Catherine Marshall, who was the head curator at IMA at the Irish Museum of Modern Art at that time. And in it, she was stating how the, uh, the Irish Museum of Modern Art is home to a national collection, but it really belongs to the people of Ireland. You know, I, I wanted to do something that was a mixture of, of um, performance events, if you like, you know, audience related events, and then more some sort of community involvement. Just at that moment, I thought, well, here we are, the people of Ireland, we, we want to show artwork and uh, we're not interested in selling it, so borrowing artwork sounds like the best suggestion. I was given the name of a, a man in, uh, in Clifton, called Brendan Flynn, uh, who ran a festival up there, which is still running and had been running for some years even then. They decided to trust us and lend us work from their collection. It was the first time they'd actually lent work outside of a, any national gallery or institution. He spoke to me and he was very encouraging about the idea and I got the general idea, you know, about how this might work. Val went up in a hire van, can you believe? We drove up to Dublin and um, we parked outside the Arts Council and we filled up his van with, um, with all their entire Louis Le uh, collection, which is considerable, it's the Tyne collection. And, um, and we packed the thing with, with all of this work. And then we drove off and went down to his folks' place down in some suburb in Dublin. And we left the van outside. This whole thing could be strong. <laughs> Nothing was insured or anything. I couldn't believe, I, did, I don't think I signed anything. You just took all this art, you know. You wouldn't do it now. I mean, that was one of the real weekends we looked forward to years ago when, when, this, when the Arts Festival started. We used to just live on that for the year, like the amount of energy and inspiration that you got from just that festival every year is, is what, what sustains you. So many highlights, like I can, some of the concerts we had in the hotel in the early days, jammed full, tickets sold out people queuing at the door. For such a small community to have so much atmosphere, it was, it was bursting. You know, the, the schools programme that, you say, Nicola Henley and Jane Seymour ran, uh, you had schools all the way from Derry Goulan all the way to Scarif. But the idea was then, you know, the kids from the local schools would be invited to come in and see the art, and I'd get all excited learning about it and then sharing all that information, and then they'd bring in, I actually made Every year of the festival, for all the schools that came, I made little handmade sketchbooks and I gave them out and the kids, each one of them then would draw, respond to the artworks. That was such good fun working with kids. It was brilliant because it was more about just unleashing in them their creative spirit really and, and they seemed to love it. They made some brilliant things. I remember one year we decided we were going to work with the environment. I think it was a year where the theme was our fragile earth and we were going to make sculptures out in the environment. And one of these children, who was building this sort of construction in the river, it was like a dam, but it was much more creative than that. It had turrets and it had gateways and arches and all sorts. He was completely focused on this. And then afterwards he said to me, this is the best day I've ever had. Uh, 
Actually, there's nothing like a good sing song or when the musicians get together. It's not alone, not alone the music, but it's the bit of camaraderie and and uh, chat and the usual. People look forward to that. Wherever I go, I'm in the world or nationally here in Ireland. I love always getting to play my fiddle. The fact of being a musician is that it's um, a very natural expression of your life energy. And people have a very natural thing with dancing and to play for dancers. Oh my goodness, if you have a good hall full of people and you're on the stage and the bus that you get. On this particular occasion, it ended up with about two to three hundred people completely blocking the road between Cush and uh, Keynes Bar. Dancing in the street till two o'clock in the morning. I mean, where can you get that? You get to understand a community really well when you see them come together and dance. There's something that is really important or really powerful behind that because you see the connection between people when they all come together in, in that kind of environment. I think the most important thing for arts, with arts, as a performer and a member of community is that you connect with people that you normally wouldn't connect with on a daily basis. Dance will always be my true love <laughs> um, or the thing that I always come back to because it goes into that the, the, the things that we don't have words for. Um, and I think so much of our experience we don't have words for, so we have the sensation, we have the emotion, we have the feeling, and then we wrap words around that. In a community arts festival, it gives us a chance to look at things that maybe we wouldn't look at as a community, to be vulnerable in a way that we wouldn't otherwise. The people who are creating theatre are unlocking themselves in order that you can unlock yourself, and we are all in that one space that nobody will ever be in again. So I think the story brings a vulnerability that sort of facilitates a sharing experience in the community. And that's an amazing thing that the Arts Festival has done for Mount Shannon over the years. The expression of the arts, whatever format it takes or whatever mode of artistic expression it takes, is all about connection. It's through the experience of the artist making the art, whether that's a poem or a piece of dance or theatre or sculpture or whatever it is that their personal experience creates this kind of universal exchange, you know, when people see it or they receive it. When you boil it down to its essence then as community arts, it's one of the, the most, I think, fast track ways that people can have these collective experiences, that the personal becomes universal and they all, we all kind of get upgraded by that kind of group experience of receiving it then. The arts is obviously appreciated and valued in terms of its worth, in terms of uh, how we connect with one another and in terms of expression and things like that. But I think there is, it might be undervalued in terms of what it brings to an economy because there's an economic value to the arts. I feel like they're sometimes the most undervalued aspect of our society, but yet everyone that I know sees them as the most important aspect of society. People say, why do you do the festival? It's so much work. And it seems so obvious because the experience that I get from art and music and the creative arts in general is so fantastic and it's so important in my life. My balance, my, my sense of purpose, my self-worth, everything is so important. How can people not have it? I mean, simply, a lot of people aren't getting the chance. So, you know, bring them the chance, offer them the opportunity. That's kind of what was really the motivating force and to see, to work with Val and Adriana and to see how that is, that's fundamentally what we all believe, you know. We believe it strongly. It started out by Jane Seymour and Peggy Boyle inviting me to show a piece of ceramic work. And then it carried on from there. I got so excited about showing a piece of work in, a, in an exhibition. It was the first time I showed a piece of work in an exhibition. It really inspired me then to create something for the next year. And then that turned into the art exhibition in the Mount Shannon. So I, I wouldn't really be doing the work I'm doing today if I hadn't actually been invited to show that first piece of work. And I realized that I, I could have a career as an artist and that I could develop my own work and view. And 
It was yeah, life-saving, it really was. I had been to one or two of the exhibitions that they'd shown in the festival over the years. I felt that it needed to reach out to people like me who didn't really understand work that was quite intellectual and I felt highbrow and above me. I haven't been trained at, I haven't been to art college, I haven't been to, well, actually I dropped out of school at 16 and sort of sod it. I thought that it would be really nice if local people in the community, and I knew there were a few artists, could put their work in the local arts festival in an exhibition. So I brought up the subject and I said, why wasn't there an arts exhibition for local people? And Nicola said, or somebody said, nobody will organise it. So I said, I'll organise it. And then I thought, bloody hell, what have I landed myself into? Because it was a huge amount of work. But it was so rewarding and so many people put their work in and became involved and helped out and it became much more of a community thing. Everybody helped out in um, organising the exhibition. Scythe and Sam were particularly prominent. So we've both been artists for a very long time and Sam has been, Sam has exhibited every year really in the, in the arts festival. Sam draws every day and it has been his medicine. It's been the way he connects, it's been the way he heals and I'm a full-time carer, and I create every single day without fail. Art for us and illness makes you go really deep. It has been the saving of us, and it has been an anchor through all of this because it's been really tough. For us, art is massive, massive. And I think particularly during this past year, where people don't have that creative resource, I think they've been at a loss. It's everybody's given right to be creative. And when we don't use it or explore it or know that it's a way of going deeper into ourselves, of really being grounded and connected to spirit, it's our saving. I made a piece here in the Mount Shannon Arts Festival and I really wanted to make something that was a combination of, you know, people I knew from the area and then performers that I'd worked with previously. And I, I liked the combination of working with people that I knew from the area, like some people were professional artists and other people were not. And I think that's something around local art that's kind of made in the area by people who are living and are committed to the area. I think it has such a richness, you know, because there's a commitment both ways. You know, I'm not a church goer or I'm not, I'm not sporty, I can't kick anything. <laughs> that was my way of connecting with my community. I remember coming back again as a performer with Russ and Gano family and playing in the same hall. So when the invitation would have been extended to us to play in the hall, at the time it might have been um, a smaller venue than we were playing in, but it was instantly put into the, we are definitely playing at this. You were speaking about the disappointment of there not being that many people. How many people were at that? It was the Hall of Montana. It was a handful it? of people. There yeah, were only about I wasn't 30 it. people and, yeah. and had gone, if that even. And, um, as, you know, if the place had been full, they, they wouldn't have performed with such intensity. It was actually incredible. It taught me a lesson about, you know, what drives artists and what drives performers. You know, it's, it's not always the notion of success. It's, 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 it's the art, it's, it's the work. Art has become more accessible to the local community within the village. And much of what the Manchana Arts Festival has tried to do is that process of demystification and saying to people and showing to people and illustrating to people that art is for everyone. I know at the moment the catch-all is if you don't see it, you can't be it. And again, I think, you know, Inish Calter Arts Festival, as it was known for some time, certainly achieved that. We were all as individuals going through challenging times in terms of breakup and, and losses, you know, extreme losses, you know, in Val's case. And I think we, uh, there's something so healing about working creatively. There's this really, really nice quote um, about that Simone de Beauvoir wrote about art uh, allows time to stop. Poets and artists probably position themselves or allow themselves go to places where they become the conduits for other people. And I think the ordinary person, the everyday person, 
can access that. The arts is life and we have been practicing arts for thousands and thousands of years. It's, it's part of us. You can't separate us from art. Without art, I think our lives would be so much poorer uh, and so much more bare and unbearable. But like art is as multiplicitous as human beings. Like there's a million ways to make art. It's fundamental to our humanity. When you allow your culture to dissipate, and this isn't being arsy about it, when you allow your culture, we should be more bolshy about that, that we allow our culture to decline, but well then we kind of open a whole can of worms that kind of really puts us under serious pressure in a whole load of other things that are really dangerous. So I think it's critical that um, our culture or our arts, that they're kind of um, fostered and kind of developed and encouraged and helped. I suppose we all work with our own inner sparks every day. If we don't have that spark, we'll have very boring lives. But um, to see when you have a festival then or a gathering, you see that spark in everyone else reflected. So you see the, um, the art that people make, you see their, you hear their music, you see the fun, the dancing, and how it brings people together as well. Allowing you to flower and come out from the deep and dark unconscious and come out to, to flower and recognize who you are and um, what your role is in, in the world and, uh, and how you can um, fulfill that. A communication tool and the arts are a great e equalizer to, to, com to community. It's not the importance of the arts, it's just the fundamentalness of the arts. It's just, arts is arts. It's, arts is all there is, really. You know, if you want any understanding of anything, then art is, is, I don't even know how to describe it, it just is. So if we're, if we're actually able to work on a soul level, we can transform everything, anything, you know. And I think that somehow trying, trying to capture that was what, what we were trying to do with the festival.